Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to um, set up your database connection in uh, NetBeans in your um, Tomcat project. So, how do you do that? Um, first, we're going to start off at the context.xml file. Uh, because uh, f in order to get the connection pool to work, you need to add this resource tag here that you see here. And there's a whole bunch of different um, settings that you can uh, place on it. Uh, but the key parts of this are um, the driver class name. This is the JDBC driver for MySQL. And it's the full package uh, class path. Uh, for that driver. So it should read com.mysql.jdbc.driver. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things that you can see here. The log abandons true, max active is 100, max idle is 30, etc. Um, the other piece, important piece, is the name of the resource. It should be called jdbc forward slash, and then usually I try to name it the same as the MySQL database that I'm re referencing. And then here you have um, username down here. Uh, this is the username you're logging in. We're logging in as root. Uh, we have the password, which is sesame. A couple other things. Um, here's the type, which is uh, javax.sql.datasource. And then the last thing is the URL, uh, the JDBC URL that gets you to your MySQL database. So for MySQL, it's going to be JDBC colon MySQL colon slash slash localhost colon 3306 slash and then the name of your MySQL database, which in our case is the CarsDB database. So that's the first part there. The second part is you're going to need to add uh, the MySQL JDBC driver library. Uh, to your library um, when you first start. Uh, and if you remember how to uh, add the library, just click on the library um, folder, click Add Library, and then you're just going to scroll down till you find the MySQL JDBC library. There you go, MySQL JDBC driver. Now we've already added it, so we're not going to go ahead and add it, but this is where you go to find it. Okay, so that's step two. Uh, step three, you're going to have to do, um, you're going to have to go ahead and under, and create a connection pool Java class, which I've already done here. It's also highlighted in your book. Um, and it also comes with the, um, the car maintenance uh, sample project. But the key thing here is uh, the here is what you place in your in your IC lookup. Okay, so it has to read Java colon slash comp slash env. This part has to come before the JDBC slash cars db because this part is what matches in your context.xml this part here. So these two are the matching pieces. So it has to match exactly at that point. Okay, so what that does is it's going to go out here in your resource and it's going to go ahead and pull the data source. And you basically use that data source to get your database connection. And then we'll see an example of how we do that in our code. So the next part is going to our servlet. Here we have a servlet that's going to go out and it's going to get our database connection by going for the connection pool, getting an instance, and then getting the database connection. When we, once we have that connection, we use that connection to do our JDBC stuff. So we create a statement object execute a query on that statement object that returns a result set 
and we use the while loop to loop through that result set. And in addition, what we do, and again, this is a regular pattern that hopefully you're seeing now, is er we try to store everything in an array list. And then this, what's in the angle brackets, uh, tells you what type of object is going to be stored on there. Because we have to tell it the type of object that this array list stores. So in this case, I created a simple Java bean that stores the makes of all the cars in there and I'll show you that in a little bit. So what happens in our while loop is it go, goes ahead and creates a make object with the constructor and all we do is we pass it the make ID and the make name and then we just add that make object that's populated with the data into the array list, which we call makes. Um, and then I just set a request attribute, so I store that array list under the makes attribute, and then I forward this over to the make.jsp file, which we'll look at in a bit. So going back to um, before we move on to the make.jsp, I just want to show you what the make class looks like. Just a simple Java bean that takes an ID and a name and then stores it in there and it's got the getters and setters all set up here. So once we have that, just show you the make.jsp. Very simply, it uses um, the JSTL core library, the for each tag. Uh, to iterate over all of the um, makes array list and it just prints out the ID and the name in this little table. Um, so, gonna, so if I go ahead and run this now because I think I covered everything go ahead and run it this up and if you look at our Chrome browser these are these are the make IDs and this is the make of the cars let's set out all 58 that are in the database oh one other thing I did want to briefly go over is just in the web XML um, you can override the first URL that it tries to pull up so as you can see, I have an index servlet because I want the servlet to get called first. And as you can see, there's a way where you can say, hey, I want the servlet to get fired first when I, when I first go to, um, to my project. So we go ahead and do that uh, by saying, OK, I want the welcome file to be indexed. As you can see, that index URL pattern is what fires the servlet. So that kind of links everything together so that the servlet gets fired because we need to fire the servlet first so that it pulls all the data from the make table into the array list. Because if there's no data in, the, in there, we go directly to that make.jsp, uh, there'll be nothing loaded. And that's what happens if I go and do this, make that JSP, and do that, it's a blank because there's um, it needs to hit the servlet first to actually pull the data out. So we need to force that. So in order not to force that, we do that. And that hits the servlet first, then it redirects to the JSP. And I think that's it. Um, Hopefully that uh, that'll help you get started and answer a lot of your questions on how to do the setup for um, this week's project. Thanks.